the decision was taken to establish in Kumasi a college for the purpose of providing for studies and training in research, in technology, science and art. Today, this decision has materialized in the establishment of this magnificent university in the heart of the city of Kumasi, the city of Osetutu and the Golden Stool, the capital and the historical city of Ashanti. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, the second of Ghana's 16 public universities, is 70 years old. It is situated approximately on a 16 square kilometer campus of undulating land and pleasant surroundings about 7 kilometers away from the center of the city of Kumasi. The campus presents a panorama of beautiful and modern buildings interspersed with beautifully manicured lawns and tropical flora which provides a cool and refreshing atmosphere congenial for academic studies. In 1949, the Ashanti king, Sir Osei Ajman II, mooted the idea and offered land for the establishment of a college of science, arts and technology. To satisfy the now Sir Osei Ajman II, who was very adamant and insistent that institutional higher education be established in Kumasi. Subsequent to that, a government ordinance on 6th October 1951 established the Kumasi College of Technology, now the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. On the 22nd of January 1952, 200 teacher trainee students were transferred from Achimoto College in Accra together with administrators to form the foundation class of this new college, about 290 kilometers away from the nation's capital. Uh, we had been told while at Achimoto, but the government was going to open a new college. They had this uh, employed, engaged a chap, a German, called Eichenberg, a huge chap, you know, six-footer. And uh, he, I don't know what, what training he had had before. I know he was a good German soldier in the First World War. And uh, he came and started prefabricated structures to start the college. The college, which was headed temporarily by Lord Hemingfoe and later permanently headed by Dr. J.P. Andrews, was to keep pace with the rapidly changing world of technologies and keep the nation abreast with the rest of the world. But how was the outlook of the campus and the living conditions? The Bomsu roundabout area was the center of the college. The administration building was the building in front of the shopping center uh, where we have uh, BR, uh, BRRI offices and also the vice chancellor's office, registrar's office, accountants and so on. The present Unity Hall site was a maintenance yard. The hospital was where it is and uh, the present Africa Hall was a playground, hockey pitch, and uh, the housing, staff housing, was uh, Okodia Road, prefab houses, and that was the whole college. There was no pipe or water supply, there was no electricity, and uh, students had Petrobox lamps. We had water cooler, a water filter, no electricity. Uh, and the place was full of tetra flies. KNUST became a fully fledged university by an act of parliament in 1961 and was established to fulfill a national expectation, teaching programs that were to be directly geared towards solving the problems of the nation. This university, therefore, has a unique opportunity for making a positive contribution to the development of Ghana by directing its attention not only to the production of graduates in engineering, architecture, building and town planning, but also by addressing itself to the investigation and research and into the problems of industrialization and agricultural development. In the same year, the university appointed its first black and Ghanaian vice-chancellor, Dr. R.P. Bafo, 
with the support of the government. The university underwent massive infrastructural development in his six-year reign, some of which were the faculties of pharmacy, agriculture, and some halls of residence. As fate may have it, the state of the political atmosphere in the country determined the rate of progress of infrastructure development and academic work in the university. Because we were not getting that funds, the fiscal development of the university, which had been very rapid and extensive during the term of my predecessor, Dr. Balfour, um, had to be stalled because we had no money really to do what we would have liked to do. In the midst of all the challenges, the students never missed out on entertainment, sports, and other recreational and religious activities. KNUSC's strive to achieve excellence led to it being the first to introduce the semester and college systems in the tertiary education in Ghana. It was also the first to introduce the admission of less endowed students and shuttle services to enhance the mobility of the students. In January 2005, the university adapted the collegiate system to allow for greater academic and administrative autonomy. This system has metamorphosed over a period and resulted in the existence of six colleges and the Institute of Distance Learning today, the College of Arts and Built Environment. College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. College of Engineering College of Health Sciences College of Humanities and Social Sciences and College of Science. The Institute of Distance Learning of KNUST takes quality tertiary education to the doorsteps of prospective beneficiaries on out-campus locations. These colleges have a combined number of 18 faculties, 97 departments offering over 500 academic programs across various disciplines. The university has about 20 research institutions. In the past, the head of state was the automatic chancellor of all public universities in the country. This convention changed and in 2005, the 16th king of the Ashanti kingdom, Otunfo Osei Tutu II, whose predecessor had initiated the establishment of this university, was appointed the chancellor. Over the past one and a half decades of his reign in this capacity, the university has witnessed rapid expansion in its infrastructure. This, amongst others, 
has resulted in increased access to quality and impactful tertiary education for the youth of Ghana and other countries on the globe. This and many others account for the over 80,000 students in the university today. Since inception, KNUST has had three principals and 12 vice chancellors who have played varied roles in the realization of the university's vision. The current is the historic first female to occupy this position. KNUST continues to make giant strides towards attaining the university's vision of building on our leadership as a premier science and technology university in Ghana and to be among the top 10 universities on the continent of Africa, with a focus on an all-inclusive education for the youth of this country and beyond. We leverage on contemporary technologies to improve our standing as a citadel of knowledge, where together with our cherished partners and stakeholders, we mold the brains of our students, the future ethical and transformative leaders of this country and the globe. Eleven registrars have also taken turns at different times in the administration of the university. The registrar's offices continue to serve as the mainstay of the university administration, facilitating and coordinating the administrative machinery while providing appropriate guidelines for policy formulation and implementation. As university administrative structures evolve and systems and structures change, we have continually adapted to the evolving trends in the management of higher education to keep the wheels of Kenya West revolving. These efforts have thankfully been facilitated by technologies mostly developed in-house by this university. From the different phases of its existence, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, has grown into a very dynamic institution, producing an equally dynamic and highly skilled workforce dominating practically every industry in Ghana. The establishment of KNUST has not only resulted in the academic training and the provision of the country's workforce, but created huge business opportunities for people to reap massive economic gains. From hostel operations, to grocery sales, stationary vending, and more. The student life activities and academic work has been great due to management's constant effort in listening to student leaders and their plights, and also providing the available structures to be able to help students with our welfare, our academic work, and social integration. Collaborations between students and academic supervisors have improved the research work of the university. Graduate education experience in KNUST has been exceptional because of the readily available logistics to support students. From the initial establishment of Out Campus Takwa School of Mines and later the Faculty of Forest Resources in Sunyane, KNUST has facilitated the establishment of two public universities, the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sunyane and the University of Mines and Technology Takwa. Currently, KNUST has also established and is nurturing a new campus at Opoase. Seventy years on, KNUST is mentoring over 33 private university colleges and over 76 Ministry of Health training institutions across the country. From everything science, engineering, health, agriculture, built environment, humanities and many more, Ghana, Africa and the world experience the giant footprint of KNUST alumni. As we celebrate our 70th anniversary on the theme, 70 years of global impact, a new age for a renewed focus, we continue to maintain our resolve to make our products and all those who get this wonderful opportunity of training at KNUST amply ready and equipped for the world of work, not only as employees, but employers with the ultimate aim of improving the quality of life of the people we serve. At 70 years, students are excited about how far the university has come. Cheers to 70 years. Cheers to 70 years of K University.
KNUST, 70 years of global impact, a new age for renewed focus. Tech TV, experience educational television.